So, hi, uh, Lisa Artis, thank you for joining us. Um, so, talking about sleep, apart from feeling tired, how does not having enough sleep affect us? Yeah, absolutely great question. Um, in the sort of short term, you know, lack of sleep has a real impact on um, your mood, attention span, and how you function on a daily basis. But sort of chronic sleep debt can have a real damaging um, impact on your mental and physical health. So there's lots of research out there that shows increases the risk of heart disease, stroke, obesity, type 2 diabetes, depression, anxiety and Alzheimer's. And that's just to name a few. What are your tips on getting enough sleep? Well, firstly, you know, make sleep a priority. You know, don't be tempted to kind of put it to the bottom of your health list. I think we spend a lot of time um, and effort, you know, really focusing on diet and exercise, you know, and they are really important, but we don't kind of put that same emphasis on sleep. And, you know, sleep is just so important. And if you think about how many times, you know, people have set the alarm to get up early, to do exercise, you know, I, I can't understand why people would want to sort of sleep deprive themselves in order to do that. Um, also, like, don't overthink sleep. You know, it's it's obviously easier said than done when you are a, a good sleeper. But if you think about the best sleepers out there and you ask them, you know, like, what do you do to get a good night's sleep? Most of them will just say they don't know or they do nothing because they're not overthinking sleep. And I think sometimes you know, when you do struggle with your sleep, it's that temptation to try and cram in 101 things in the hour before bedtime to try and make yourself sleep better. And actually what you're doing then is, is setting off almost like a, a cycle of anxiety around bedtime. And what kind of things can, can help people struggling to get to sleep? I mean, there's lots of things out there that people can do, but I like to really focus on what I call like the three R's. And that is um, regular hours so actually going to bed and getting up at kind of roughly the same time all this all the time is is crucial um you know i know it sounds boring but actually that regularity of bedtimes and wake up times is so important it really kind of helps to program you know the body and the brain to sleep better um routine i think as we get older we kind of think we can just hop into bed and fall asleep you know with kind of no kind of downtime before bed and it's really important to factor in some time you know to relax and unwind you know de-stress from the day so you know we, we do a lot with children around you know that kind of bedtime routine but as adults we should also do that as well and that bedtime routine can be how you want it to look like you know not everybody has to do the same things we don't all have to have a bath we don't all have to spray our room with lavender but just make that time to unwind properly before bed and the last hour is a restful environment so it's like looking at your bedroom environment and making sure it's fit for sleep you know is it cool is it quiet dark clutter free and do you have a really good bed you know good pillows and really nice bedding to get into at the end of the day and what are your thoughts on naps and what's the ideal length yeah, I mean, a lot of people feel like naps are like the devil, but they're not. You know, they can be really, really helpful for some people. Um, you know, a good power nap, you know, we would normally say lasts around 20 to 30 minutes and it can really improve alertness and boost energy levels. Um, keeping within sort of 20 to 30 minutes means you stay in that light stage of sleep, which is what you need. Um, if you sort of sleep for longer than 30 minutes, you're likely to move into what we call like these deeper stages of sleep. And actually, if you wake up from those you'll feel more groggy more disorientated and actually you'll probably feel worse from having the nap than you did before so you know a good power nap 20 to 30 minutes and a lot of us I'm sure use the snooze button what are your thoughts on that stop pressing it <laughs> So I know for a lot of people, you know, it does become part of that morning routine to press it several times. But quite often you will feel even more tired or groggy than if you'd just woken up from that first alarm. Um, and that's because what happens is when that first one goes off, you're already then in that waking up process. So actually just dropping back off for another five minutes isn't actually giving you any good quality sleep and then pressing it again, you're not actually getting any quality sleep in that period of time. So 
also every time the alarm goes back off you get an increase in cortisol which obviously wakes you quite abruptly as well um so actually you are better just setting your alarm 10 to 15 minutes later so that you can enjoy that extra good quality 10 to 15 minutes and then rather than sort of repeatedly pressing snooze and anyone i think who's the temptation of pressing snooze is just too great is move the alarm to the other side of the bedroom so you actually have to get up to press snooze and to be honest by the time you've done that you probably think it's just as easy to wake up well lisa artis thank you so much for joining us i appreciate it thank you